Hello, this is Elliot, W6EL, and in this video, I'm going to go over some changes I made to the Exciter and the PA board of this SGC SG2000. I want to caution you that just because I made these changes doesn't mean you should. You need to have the proper equipment to make these changes and verify that the radio is still in compliance with emission specifications. I made these changes because I wasn't getting the full power output on this radio and I wasn't able to complete the alignment process. And along the way, I found a lot of other issues. We'll also cover the broken uh, power and SWR metering, how to fix that. And we'll talk about some design weaknesses inside here that I found along the way. So buckle up. This is going to be a complicated video, but I think you'll find it interesting. Um, first of all, I found a resistor right here, which was a bit stressed in the circuit. This resistor is used to key the transmitting circuits on and off. That's all it does. It doesn't need to dissipate a lot of power. And here it is. This is R64 on the LPA board. And I changed it uh, from 220 ohms to 420 ohms. And that's because uh, by default, when you transmit, this resistor dissipates 750 milliwatts continuously just to turn this transistor on. It, it's really not needed at all. And so I changed it from a quarter watt 220 ohm resistor to a half watt metal film uh, 420 ohm resistor. And so now that doesn't get hot when you transmit and it should last a lot longer and be happier. Other repairs done on this board, I replaced these two capacitors because this one was getting hot during transmit just a little bit on the side. And while I was at it, I replaced these capacitors as well because uh, they looked a little discolored on some of them. So I figured, you know, why not? Let's take care of that while I've got the board out. These capacitors were initially, uh, I believe, 500 volt capacitors, and I upgraded them to uh, 1500 volts because why not? They'll never be a problem. You know, they can handle the heat just fine. So I thought that was a, a good modification to make. I also replaced the power wiring here. The original power wiring, this this is one of them. It just didn't really look appropriate for running uh, over 100 watts, you know. So I put these uh, Teflon wires in. I doubled up each one and I soldered the uh, surface of the contacts to the board because I know that um, pulling power through the via is not ideal. You really want to solder it to both sides. So. Initially, they were only soldered in the bottom, now they're soldered in top and bottom, and they've got double the wires. While I was at it, I beefed up these um, fuses from 15 amp fast blows to 20 amp slow blow ceramics. And that gives you just a couple more watts because you're losing less getting to the finals. And it, you know, in a mobile situation where you don't always have 13.8 volts, you really want every volt you can get. And so that's why you do things like this. Unfortunately, uh, while I was on this board, I found all sorts of nonsense that I had to take care of. And I noticed this because the waveform coming out of this transistor, uh, this is, what is this, Q1 on the collector, it was fairly distorted. And I couldn't understand why. So then I checked the uh, signal coming into the transistor, and it was also fairly distorted. And so I started poking around, and I, I found a, a number of things. I'm going to try to... Um, take this slow because there's a, a quite a few things I changed out. First of all, I found that these two transistors were actually very unmatched. They were different brands, which is always a sign they might not be matched. And um, just measuring with the oscilloscope while I was transmitting on CW, I found very different amounts of voltage coming out in the collectors of these two transistors. It was obscenely different. It was like, you know, twice as much coming out of one and the other. And what that does, of course, is it gives you more second order harmonics. And indeed, I was getting that. So I ordered a, a match set for 40 bucks from RF Parts, and I put them in, and that's that's been good. While I was at it, these resistors here, I bumped them up to uh, matched 1% metal films because you know any mismatch you have between this side and this side, it just leads to more distortion, and you really want to lower that so that the rest of the amplifier isn't working hard on the harmonics that you're not really interested in, you know? So I replaced these, uh, they're matched now. But then I got to looking at the distortion more carefully and I realized it was coming in distorted through this cord right here. I just plugged the output of this into uh, my oscilloscope and my analyzer and I could see what's going on. But it's trickier than that. This signal is clean when it's not driving this transistor. And what's happening is the crossover distortion from driving these two transistors fairly hard 
is coming back in and overloading this transistor, which causes a really nasty load to appear to the exciter board. And so to deal with that, I made a number of changes. So with regard to this side, there's a couple of things that's um, kind of worth pointing out. First of all, the impedance going in to this board by default is quite low. It's, it's around uh, 15 to 20 ohms. So it's got some SWR coming in. You can see the reflections if you measure it. To deal with that, I increased this resistor right here. And when I edit the video, I'll tell you what the resistor is. I can't remember. But I increased it from 180 ohms to 270 ohms. And that you know increased the impedance coming in here, so the exciter was a little more happier driving it. I also added this resistor. This is a 4.7 ohm resistor. It's pretty low. And that's what um, the emitter is tied to in this transistor. So the emitter goes to a 4.7 ohm, and then it goes to another resistor with a bypass capacitor. Um, to keep this transistor in class A, which you have to do on this kind of circuit, in order to keep this in class A so it's conducting the whole time, you need to make sure that the signal coming in doesn't unbias the transistor. The transistor needs to maintain that you know, 0 0.6 to 0.7 volts-ish across the emitter base junction. And so to give it a little more room, I added a 2 ohm resistor. 2 ohms doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you consider the circuit's only at 4.7, it's, it's you know, significant. So that gave it a little more breathing room, and it, it seemed happier with that. But I was still seeing a lot of the result of driving these transistors in the operation of this one, and I don't really like that. And I believe the reason is because of a mismatch between the collector driving this transformer and driving into these transistors. We all know that the input impedance here is really low on the order of like an ohm or so. And um, this transformer just wasn't quite enough of a ratio to, to pull it off. So I added an extra turn. I don't know if you can see that here. Let's zoom in. There we go. So I, I added an extra turn. I just took the red wire that was poking out over here. And I stuck it back in, extended it, came back around. And that extra turn made a dramatic difference in how much distortion this uh, stage was producing. But I still had one more thing to do, and that was to make the exciter a little more stable because I found that on 60 meters, that's the 5 megahertz band, it was unstable. Sometimes when I transmitted on CW, I could see the meter moving like crazy right here. And on the scope, it looks terrible. This is actually instability on 5 megahertz with my exciter. I don't know if every SGC2000 has this problem. I suspect they don't. Um, and if you lower the power enough, it doesn't do it. But in any case, that circuit's a bit unhappy at 5 megahertz. I simulated it, and I found that, indeed, there was some resonance there. Um, in simulation, it doesn't become unstable, but it doesn't have a whole lot of phase margin. So let me show you what I did to that. So this is the back. This is what they call the exciter board. It's also the receiver and the computer and the master oscillator and many other things. But anyway, look over here right here. This is where the transmit signal is made at approximately, you know, four to 10 milliwatts coming out here on this connector over to the LPA board. This is that same piece of coax you saw on the other side. And I found that it very easily went into oscillation as I was adjusting the amplitude here. And I was not able to adjust it per the service manual, which tells you to adjust it to a certain level and then to back it off. I couldn't do it. It just went crazy on five megahertz. So here's what I did. You can kind of see this board here. Let me turn this off. There we go, it's better. I haven't mounted it in there yet because I wanted to show it on the video. So this is kind of detailed here. Basically, I changed this transformer right here. By default, it's a two to one, and I made it into a four to one by repurposing one from an ICOM 736 10 watt PA board I had lying around. Everybody's got those, right? Then I moved the transistor from here over to here. But then also uh, to aid with the stability, in addition to the, the higher ratio, which is required to bring you down you know, close to 50 ohms, I added feedback around the circuit. And that's what I'm showing here in this partial schematic. I'll put the whole schematic up on the screen when I do the editing. But basically, uh, from the input of the circuit all the way over to the output, I've created a path. There's a variable resistor, a DC blocking capacitor so that you don't unbias either side. And then I also found 
a very small capacitor across here prevents you from having high gain at frequencies you just don't have any business amplifying with this circuit. The way this circuit works, this variable resistor adjusts the feedback. And that's how much of the output signal is pumped back over to the input. And there's a decoupling capacitor, as I mentioned, and a 10 picofarad capacitor across the, the whole network for uh, the lowest amount of gain on the highest frequencies. Over here, we have the custom transformer, which is repurposed from the ICOM 736 10 watt power board. I changed the windings for a higher ratio. And we have the transistor, the 2N quad 2. This, is, this one's from uh, Motorola and the decoupling capacitor for that circuit. That's wired over here and the feedback, uh, well, the output of the feedback network is this white wire right here. This is probably not the best way to do this modification because there's not an easy way to package it, but um, it does work. So I'll start with what works and go from there, you know. And when adjusting this, basically, when you turn this knob, you are setting the gain. And in order to do this, you do have to disable the ALC feedback resistor. It's on the other side of the board. That way the radio isn't folding power back while you make the adjustment. You just want it to run kind of open loop-ish. As you adjust this, you get more or less output power. You will find a spot where you, you get, you know, um, minimum feedback and it goes unstable at five megahertz. And, you know, you kind of adjust away from that point. And you can also adjust the amplitude. This is the gain for that transistor here. You can adjust that backwards and forwards as you make this adjustment and find a spot where you get the most gain out of the circuit and you don't have any instability problems. The final value for this ended up being around 235 ohms right here. It will be different in every radio and really, you know, you should not do this on your radio unless you have a problem with it like I encountered. And then you have to proceed very carefully with instrumentation and measurements as you go. I also had some problems with the SWR and power metering on this radio, and that turned out to be these two diodes over here. I ended up replacing diode 20, 21, 17, and 18. Two of those are Zener diodes, and two are just their standard uh, 1N4148s. I think only the 1N4148s were bad, and they're over here. You can verify this in circuit with a, a voltmeter on the diode setting. You can tell uh, when you flip the polarity, the reverse voltage is all wrong. I replaced the Zener diodes anyway because I wasn't really sure. It didn't hurt any to replace them, so now the metering is working. And that also means the ALC is working properly. The ALC loop in this radio basically lowers the exciter's output power when this voltage is met from these two pots, low and high power respectively. And that's made by measuring the output power and this and comparing them and sending a voltage back to the exciter. If you want to disable that for troubleshooting, which you need to do if you're working on the finals, you just pull this resistor up right here. Pop this resistor out and then it will just be a fixed output power with no feedback. And you can basically uh, tune it for maximum power and then put this resistor back in and dial in the power level that you want. That's an interesting trick I found out while I was working on it. All right, so here we have the schematic of what they're calling the exciter board. And this shows the filtering and part of the ALC circuits. I wanna show you the modification with the resistor. So the way this circuit is designed, this is at 13.8 or 13.6 volts when the radio is switched on, that's what SW means. This is pulled up to 13 volts when it's receiving and when it's transmitting, it's, you know, it's not TX, so this goes down to essentially ground. This poor resistor here experiences the full 0 to 13 volts across it, well, minus the 0.7 of this uh, transistor here. And it gets hot during transmit. So if you change that from 220 to around 400 ohms and you put in a higher power resistor, uh, this circuit will work a lot better. That's what I've done here. Up here, you can see part of the ALC circuit. I added a capacitor right here where these two resistors meet each other. I put a uh, 10 nanofarad and a 4.7 microfarad to ground. And the reason is because I saw some RF ripple here. And this part should not have any RF in it. This is just a set DC voltage from uh, these potentiometers. So a little capacitor here will stop that from happening. If you ever need to disable the ALC loop so that you can troubleshoot the PA amplifier, 
this resistor is the one you pull up. You pull this resistor out, and then just a steady voltage is fed into here for the limit. Crank these pots up, and then you can run the uh, power amplifier as high or low as you wish. These are the diodes that gave me trouble in the power and SWR metering right here. If anyone has a good idea of an upgrade diode, I'd be like, I'd like to hear that. These are one in 4148s, and they need to switch comfortably at 30 megahertz and handle, you know, a few hundred volts that could happen from like a storage or a static discharge. These are the modifications made to this board. This is the power amplifier. The exciter connects right here. First thing I did is I removed this resistor, R1. That's because this is already too low of an impedance. Second thing, I increased R4 from 180 to 270 ohms. And that gets you about 35 ohms input impedance through this transformer, which is sufficient. I changed this resistor. So it says 4.7 here. I ended up with 4.7 plus two, so 6.7 ohms here. And that does make a difference with the margin of this. We don't need much gain, but we do need margin because this transistor has to stay in class A mode the whole time. Next, I put in metal film matching resistors for these pairs here. That's essential if you wanna um, really assure that you're knocking out that second order harmonic. I replaced these two transistors because someone had replaced one and they were sorely unmatched. And with this transformer here, I added an extra turn. So where it says three turns, it's actually four turns. And that's because this impedance here is, is really low. This is under an ohm, I think. And uh, this collector just can't quite drive that. So it needs a higher ratio in here. This is the exciter. The modifications are as follows. I changed this transformer to a one to four turns ratio transformer because I found the output impedance here was uh, fairly high and it wasn't anywhere near uh, 50 ohms by default. It was around 200. And going into the lower impedance uh, power amplifier input, it was really facing a tremendous SWR. So I changed this out to a one to four turns ratio. And I also added feedback here. Right from here, there's a one kilo ohm variable resistor. So you can adjust the, uh, the amount of feedback that you want here in this 1K. There's also a 10 puff across it so that you get the maximum feedback on very high frequencies and thus slower gain. Then there's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to block the DC so you don't bias them differently. And that goes over to here, or really this is where you're gonna wire it to right there. And that allowed me to adjust the gain right here and the feedback independently and really tune the section in so that it was more stable on all the different bands that you might want to operate. Well, that's all for this video. Join me next time. Hopefully we'll get to the head unit and some of the audio issues I have with this radio. In the meantime, get on the air. Enjoy ham radio, 7-3.